Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel, my name is Invin and today I'm going to be bringing you guys a video on the essentials for each of the roles in New World. Now I'm by no means claiming to be an expert on all three of the roles, primarily in terms of transparency here, I am a DPS, I've had a little bit of experience with healing, but generally I've played all of the DPS weapons to some degree, some way more than others obviously, but that's kind of where my strengths lie in this game and that's kind of the role that I do. So I'm briefly going to go over some sort of beginner tips for each of the roles as well as kind of outlining what they are for kind of anyone who is a bit newer to MMOs or newer to New World in general and explain how they kind of fit in with the class of system that we have. And then I'm just going to go over a few things that each class and role needs to be doing in this game in terms of what weapons they should be using, what types of attacks they should be doing how the role fits in with both PvE and PvP on both small and large scale, and obviously how you can use this to your advantage while doing the main story quest as well. So jumping into it here, firstly you have three main roles, if you like, in the game, which are going to be your DPS, which is your damage per second or damage dealers, often referred to in game as DPS or DD, which is damage dealer. You then have your tanks, which will just be referred to as that, and healers, which will be referred to as healers or HLs. Now, these three things have significant roles. The DPS are supposed to be the ones who put out a lot of damage. They're not quite as much uh, up front on the constitution pool as your tanks will be, and they often don't use a sword and shield, but they will be using things like the hatchet, the great axe, the fire staff, the ice gauntlet, the bow, the spear, all them kind of weapons, and they're going to be, main aim in there is going to be to do a lot of damage quickly to a target. Then you've got your tanks. Tanks are going to be the people who are gathering what we call aggro, which is where you get the mobs to follow you around. There's different taunts in the game, and using a carnelian gem, you'll be able to do this, and what the aim of a tank is to take all of the damage from the mobs by having a high sustain armor with heavy armor, high sustain health pool through high amounts of constitution, and essentially using the sword and shield to block through a lot of enemy attacks. Whilst the enemies are all attacking them, the damage dealers can freely do damage, and that's the aim there. And then these two roles are both backed up by one of the most essential roles, obviously, which is the healer. The healer's job is essentially to keep everybody alive in the group for as long as is physically possible and if you get a very good healer throughout the entire run of the expedition or indeed the pvp battle whatever the case may be now healers jobs are also to do a little bit of damage when they can but primarily they're going to be focusing on healing the tank and any dps's that drop low if they do gain aggro from time to time as this can happen now one thing to note about healers in new world is they do generate a decent amount of aggro as well so damage dealers will need to be on the lookout for being able to rotate and help out the damage dealer to take aggro off them so they can reheal you and the tank until the tank can regain control particularly in earlier levels when access to gems and abilities is not as frequent as it is in the late game now going over the roles just there is one thing now what i want to talk about is kind of the essentials for each of these roles so like i mentioned there damage dealers pretty much have the role of doing as much damage as physically possible now this doesn't mean that they should full stack strength or intelligence based off what their primary weapon stats are instead what they should be doing is looking at upgrading weapons and armor to you know kind of complement the damage that they do throughout the game so for example you're going to get more of a damage buff from upgrading your sword or your hatchet for example than you are from upgrading too many points into strength now that being said it is still very much worthwhile getting strength if you're using it or intelligence if you're using it because that is going to be very very good and i think there is a difference between caster dps or ranged dps so bows muskets ice gauntlets and fire staffs versus things like close range melee dps which is going to be like your great axe warhammer hatchet uh, spear and probably some others that I've missed off the top of my head there, but those ones are going to be like your close range melee DPS. Now, melee DPS is recommended to kind of go half and half on constitution, at least until you get 50 points, because the first threshold perk there gives you an increase to the um, kind of potions and food that you use. It increases the amount of health that they give you back, so that's going to be really, really useful in pretty much every aspect of the game, and especially when your tealers are with you in the expeditions or in the PvP battle, it's going to give a little bit less pressure to them if you able to heal yourself a bit more with your own consumables as well but then range dps it's still suggested that you should take some constitution points so that you're not completely squishy although some people have found some very good builds just solely focusing on damage same with melee as well but obviously kind of when you're in the mix a little bit more you've got a chance of getting hit a little bit more often too so generally there you want to split it personally for me i played great axe and hatchet or i've played fire staff and ice gauntlet and either way there i've kind of gone with the hatchet and the melee approach there i've gone 
pretty much two for two. So I'll go two points into strength, two points into constitution up till 50. And then I'll do three points into strength and one point into constitution for every four points that I get. If you guys can kind of follow that, it's, you know, kind of basically a full level into strength. And then off the next one, I'll take one and then two into strength and one into con. And basically keep going up like that so that I can still keep getting my health pool increasing, which obviously does happen with armor and stuff as well. But it's a really nice touch to just have that little bit extra health. So you're a little bit more tanky and you can take a little bit more sustain in those solo questing as well when you're doing main story quests, side quests, if you're doing solo or even in groups, gives you a little bit more sustain there. Range DPS generally add kind of heavy focus, whichever the primary stat is, do a lot more and usually go 3-1 off the bat, so I level up my constitution a lot slower, but I am able to do a lot more damage earlier on, so it's kind of a trade-off, but it's up to you how you want to build it, that's just my recommendations. For DPS, it's going to be essential to know your positioning to make sure that you are in the right position, so for example, backstabbing mobs or enemy players is going to increase your damage tenfold, particularly with melee, aiming for headshots with things like the bow and the musket is going to be super useful, and getting used to how how much damage your AoE does versus single target burst spells with things like the fire staff or the ice gauntlet is going to be super pivotal to help you out in different encounters because you're going to want to know what each ability does in each different situation. In terms of gems, there's nothing really specific that you should be using in terms of a DPS, just whichever kind of your primary stat is that you're scaling from. If you're using a secondary weapon that doesn't primarily scale from that, it may be wise to convert some damage into that primary stat if you have a gem slot available. But it's entirely up to you again how you want to build that. This is just kind of like an overview of things that you must be doing. Now, tanking's a little bit more straightforward in terms of things that you must do. Obviously, sword and board is a requirement. You will need that. You will need it for the taunt abilities that are on there, and you will need it for defense yourself against attacks so the sword and shield is a 100% required also you need to get a carnelian gem on your weapon as soon as is physically possible as this again increases the threat that you generate which means that the enemies will attack you as opposed to the rest of your party now this obviously doesn't work in pvp so bear that in mind if you are tanking in pvp you don't have things like threat generation that's only against pve mobs but you are going to be able to get in the way of a lot of those attacks take a huge amount of hits and deal a substantial amount of damage particularly when you pair the sword and shield with something like the great axe or the warhammer for stunning people you're going to be a very big nuisance particularly in large scale wars so that's going to be something which is very very nice you need to make sure that you're stacking points into constitution to allow you to have as big a health pool as physically possible and then you can get some other stats primarily off of your armor in the late game there as well particularly you'll be able to get maybe up to 50 60 strength off armor as well as having more or less max constitution points as well which is really really nice Healing, again, a little bit more straightforward in terms of requirements. Obviously, the life staff at the moment. We have heard rumours that the Void Gauntlet may provide some sort of healing when it does come into the game. But talking about things that are in-game right now, it's obviously going to be the life staff. Some people like to pair this with the Sword and Shield. Others like to pair it with things like the Great Axe and put a Nature Gem on or put on an Amber Gem to scale some of that focus points into a bit of damage on the Great Axe there. But it is entirely up to you. Again, maybe the Ice Gauntlet for Entomb. That works really well also. So it's kind of personal preference on what you prefer there life staff you want to make sure obviously that you've stacked all of your attribute points into focus to ensure that your healing is as best it can be and of course you have the mana pool available there from that too and another thing that you can get is a little few constitution points from armor further down the line particularly and make sure right now as of unless we get obviously any patch notes changes just before launch you are going to want to make sure you're in light armor in order to get that plus 20% efficacy to your healing which means you can provide the best possible heals for your team and the rest of your team you need to watch out for your healer because they're now wearing light armor only pretty much which is going to mean they're a lot more squishy now in terms of pve you will need all of these roles same for pvp so you will always need each one of these these roles generally the setup is one tank one healer and three dps for a party of five and going into wars you're going to have 10 tanks 10 healers and 30 dps as a standard base number but obviously this could change going along when you're doing expeditions they are also going to be the one healer one tank and three dps and generally you want to mix it up you want to have maybe one melee dps and two ranged although to be honest it doesn't really matter as long as the people who are in your party are doing damage the healer should be a dedicated healer and the tank should be a dedicated tank to make sure that they've got all the necessities for that role equipped and ready to go as so that's going to mean that you can clear these things a lot smoother and in terms of open world pve in terms of doing side quests main quests or just farming elite zones taking a few of each role can never go amiss but a rule of thumb generally is for every four or five other players you always want to try and get at least a healer or two for that once you've got two or three though you can run with a party of 20 25 and still be fine with two or three healers because they should be able to keep up generally just bear in mind that they can't see everybody's health bar as clearly when they're not in the party so try to 
to pair up your parties with your healers and tanks on the same thing so that they can see each other's health bars and, you know, heal up those people who are taking the aggro. Again, with the tanks, really you only want one or two of these, generally because you don't want to be splitting aggro too much, but if you are doing a big group farm, it may be wise to take two or three tanks so that there is the opportunity to make sure that the healers are perfectly covered and that there's three different people holding mobs. We know who we're healing, we know who's not going to get hit, hopefully, and those can be maintained there, and then the DPS should just be spread out, making sure to get those backstabs where possible, and obviously getting as much damage out as physically possible in the short amount of time that they've got there, to be able to get those kills, and obviously leveling up all your weapons and things will help with doing extra damage, like I said there, on top of increasing the actual weapon quality, and the main stat of your weapon, which is going to be telling you in-game what it scales from, so you won't be under any mysteries, but make sure you scale that main stat to get as much damage as possible. Now in terms of large-scale PvP, I did mention there in the wars that you kind of want the three... 3-1-1 setup again. Your healers and casters should be on the back line along with your ranged DPS. You should have your tanks and melee DPS up front and what you should also really do is have a team of kind of hybrids. So some melee DPS, maybe a tank in there and some ranged DPS that protect the back line so if people try and flank you've got a bit of protection there. Healers are going to be pivotal as well as so are tanks because your aim is to take those flags in the wars so you're going to want to make sure you can maintain a hold on that area and obviously you're going to want your DPS to be able to do some damage there. So pretty much every role is very very useful but what I will say is there is a lot more DPS than anything else so if you are planning to play tank or healer in this game you're probably going to have a lot of friends. So hopefully you guys have kind of found this overview and essential list and showdown of what you need to have for each role helpful and useful before launch, particularly for any of you that haven't managed to play yet. A few things to kind of watch out for there that you'll really need to make use of in the world to fulfill your role to the best of your ability. If you have found today's video useful and informative, please do drop a like on it down below as it really does help me out. And if you are new to the channel, you'd like to see more new world content, then make sure you hit the subscribe button down below with the notification bell on. So so that you don't miss out on any of the content that I've got coming up. I've got tons of cool stuff coming up, really informational content, some useful tips and tricks, all that sort of stuff, and of course any news we get between now and launch and beyond, so make sure you subscribe for that. If you would like to join the Discord community, the link for that will be in the description and in the comments down below. We have over 800 people in there now, it's crazy, we're getting very, very close to that 1000 mark, everybody chatting all sorts of new world stuff, gaming stuff in general, so we'd love you to be part of that. If you'd like to join, go ahead and join us there, and other than that, if you'd like to support me directly as a content creator here on YouTube. The join button is available to join the membership program down below on today's video. So you can click that and see the options we have available too if you would like to. And other than that, as always, thank you very much for watching guys. Take care and peace.